YouTube, it's Pride Phillips, and we have our youngest here to demonstrate this High Boy DK1, which is the coolest thing we've ever reviewed, I think, on this channel. And yes, it is an e-bike, because we know you guys love them. And he loves it, and he's pretty much done nothing but ride this thing for the last week or so. Normally, we do unbox build radio setup and then maiden flight, and we show you the whole plethora. We do have some footage of it but he has gotten so good with it, we couldn't resist showing a little bit better skill, and it's only taken, what, like three or four days? Mm -hmm. So, without further ado, you ready? We're gonna do speed level one, so that you can see. Now, full disclosure, we added this light. We also added this light. It was a kit we got on Amazon. We'll link to it, it's nothing special. You can get them, there's a million different choices, but we'll link to what we did. And same thing with the helmet, we'll link to what we got for the helmet. It came with some gloves and it came with goggles, which he has wanted to wear a few times. And so without further ado, we just want you guys, especially you mothers and fathers too, that are afraid of safety issues, this thing will go 15.5 miles an hour. But let's just watch how that really looks in real life. By the way, he is how tall? 48 inches tall. 48 inches tall and how heavy? And he weighs about 44 pounds. And this is about 30. That's about 37 pounds, the bike yep. itself. So it's not without consequence. Show them how easy it is, just like you've been doing all week. Just do Go a ahead, loop just a loop the in the front. front yard. And he's in speed one? Yeah. Okay. And speed one is the slowest. There's three speeds. And what we have found is that he's all the way up to speed three. It took us like all of 10 minutes to do that. Speed one is almost harder for him now because he's used to going faster. Yes, there may have been a time when he extremely cutely had his sister on the back seat who is about his size, mm -hmm. but uh, high boy probably wouldn't like that. So that didn't happen. It was just a figment of our imagination that we took pictures of and thought was the cutest thing <laughs> ever in the history of time. Okay, come back over here. Let's change it. That's a little bit too slow for my taste. Okay, so come out here and break and show the people how you break. First thing you wanna do with your kids is show them how to brake if they're not used to a handle brake and they're used to pedal brakes. These pedals fold up and out of the way and they are very heavy duty. So make sure they've got shoes on because you don't want your bare feet on there. Also, there is a heavy duty kickstand back here. There's a drum brake mechanism right here. The drum brake mechanism has adjustments here. You can see it's already really dirty, which is super cool. And uh, this thing has charged really quick. It, it doesn't really take all that long but there's also a charge indicator on the side here and there's a power button here. Now, one thing to watch out for with this big supportive pad is if you have a kid that's strong enough, they'll be able to go faster first. So make sure you put it in speed one. So let's show them how to set the speed. There's a rocker switch. If it's rocked here, it's in the low speed. If it's rocked here, it's in the second or the middle speed. And if it's in the middle setting, it's actually in the highest speed. We're gonna put it in speed two, and then this is how you charge. You just unplug it, and it's just a regular AC adapter. Now keep in mind, it gets hot, just like all the e-bikes do. The charger needs to be plugged in. Don't plug a bunch of other stuff in with it. You might overload your circuit breaker, so just remember that, and make sure that it's not sitting, you know, like in a pile of flammable equipment or something like that. Keep it in a safe spot. These are lithium batteries. It's a small 4,000 milliamp hour pack, but it's only a 300 watt motor. But just keep in mind, if you're thinking 300 watts is not that much wattage, he's small, I'm not. I'm riding on a thousand watt bicycle and I can go 28 miles an hour. He's riding on this and he's never gonna go more than about 15 and a half miles an hour unless he's going downhill with a tailwind, okay? So keep in mind, 15 is very slow on this bike. Okay, speed two, do a couple of laps for us. Go as crazy fast as you can and so he's, done a really good job on this thing. He's had no problems. And he's also the most craziest of our kids. And I don't know if you guys have more than one kid, but we have four of them and he's crazy. You can go in the grass, just turn there and come back. He's reluctant <laughs> to disappoint. Show him how fast you can go in speed two. And see it handles the bumps really nicely. There is a spring in the center, but not on the front. Those are simulated springs on the front. Okay, stop there, bud. So now we're gonna go all the way up to speed three, which is what you're used to most. 
And if you wanna just continue around, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have you run around the house in the circuit that goes right around the house, okay? So let's just, you just keep going and we'll move and get camera angles for the people watching at home, okay? When we're done filming this, just so you guys know, audience, we are going to do a ride along and we'll film from the uh, spotter bike. And one thing, you see how he's got his fingers on the brakes all the time? That was something we worked with him on because he was used to pedal brakes. And actually he was used to using a balance bike as recently as, what, about two, two weeks, weeks ago? ago? So he's just one of these kids that picks up really quick on these items. One of the things we've noticed with him and his sister, who was actually his big sister, is they like to, yeah, he got distracted by a squirrel there, That's as you sweet. notice. Mm -hmm. So he was checking that out and not looking in front. So he's gonna just do a little circuit around here. And that circuit is going to be kind of around the house was what he was supposed to do, but we're going to just follow along. There was a minor miscommunication with our help. So he's gonna go around the house. You ready to go? Okay, go ahead, buddy. Okay, so we're just gonna follow him and give you guys a shot of the route because they love doing this route. And yes, we're gonna clip it together as we go. So we're just gonna give you guys different shots. We've got this little chicken coop we like riding around and he's a little hesitant here cause it's bumpy. The hills are just fine on speed setting three. Keep in mind the speed settings are only a function of top speed. Good job, bud. So you're getting really good at the speed on three speed setting, right? So what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna come take a ride with you. And maybe what we'll do is we'll ride, should we ride up the street just to see the speed real quick? And then we'll double back and we'll come right back, okay? So we'll get rigged up for that and then we'll do that together, okay? All right guys, we're gonna ride, go ahead. So with this ride, I've got a speedometer. So we're just gonna test it for speed. And uh, it shouldn't be anything too crazy. I'm gonna have to go to my lowest speed. Go faster, bud. Okay, careful. Okay, you're clear, bud. Turn, go. Turn right, there you go. Good job. Okay, so as you can see, that 15 miles an hour has not been reached or achieved yet. but he's having a good time. So we're just gonna take you on a little ride. And he loves doing this. We go up here and we ride, ride this route all the time. See, he's going about nine and a half miles an hour, which is not very heavy, and he's gonna lose a lot of speed on this hill, okay? So I'm trying to pace him. And it looks like we're going about eight something. So if you're riding with your kids and they have an e-bike, then you have to be real careful to make sure that you get similar speed bikes, okay? Okay, so he's making a turn. So we just kind of ride through this country cemetery here. Make a quick turn. You can go a lot faster, bud, and be safe. There you go. I think he thinks I'm trying to keep up with him, but I'm just trying to film him. <laughs> He's just a really, really good bike rider, and this is a super fun product. See about 10 miles an hour. 
Just break early, bud. And don't mind that noise, that's my brakes. So he's gonna slow way down here because he's very timid around the turns on asphalt. But on grass, he's kind of a crazy, crazy kid. Okay, so he's doing just fine. Okay, so this is where he's gonna really lose speed going uphill. As you can see, we're going uh, six or so miles an hour, but I'm catching up with him. So probably a little bit less in reality. And I'm finding it kind of challenging to strike that balance and speed disparity. Go ahead and pull hard on it so you go fast, bud. You just got a straightaway. Beautiful night. See, now he's finally, he got a little bit more speed there going. He's probably going like close to 12. I'm catching up to him now, but he's slowed down too. I'll help you look, bud. Just wait. Okay. You're good to go. Go ahead and turn out. So as you can see, go ahead and go fast. See? Go on to the right side, buddy. Fortunately, our road is uh, lesser used, let's say. You can see him really trying to crank it. <laughs> Make a turn here. See, he took that turn pretty quick. Good job. So anybody who's concerned about speed need not to be concerned. Okay, I'm gonna dismount and talk to him for a minute. Okay, you did a really good job. Did you have fun on that ride? Good. Well, I sure had a good time. It was a little bit slower. I figured you'd be wanting to go crazy fast. How come you were going so slow? Just being timid? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe if you show these people after a few minutes, we'll take a clip in the dark and you can show them just how fun and crazy you can be and be safe still. Why don't you do a little bit more laps in the front yard and we'll film that and you can just have a good time and maybe do a couple of routes and we'll film some clips, okay bud? Thanks for doing that ride. So as you can see, this high boy DK1 is just super fun. If you've got a kid that is either interested in getting a motorcycle some year, like in many, many, many years, like when he's 40, <laughs> um, then this would be a great transition from not riding motorcycles to riding motorcycles. But also he's really a pretty careful kid. And so we're not super worried and as you can see, even when we give him free rein, he really doesn't even push it that hard. Um, so we're super, we're super happy with it. We couldn't have been happier with it. It's really fun and the kids have loved it and they're getting on their bikes and they're riding all over the place and they're just loving it. So if you guys have a, a, a gift idea that you need for your children, um, whether it be for even a little bit bigger kid because this has 140 pound weight capacity. Mm -hmm. So if you stay tuned, we'll do the unbox and build. There is a little bit of assembly. It's very simple. I think you have to basically mount the handlebars if I'm remembering right. And then you have to you cut have a few screw, zip ties. You have to actually screw the spring mount in yeah, right above the tail wheel. Yeah, That's and then the, the lights are just something we added. It is very dark. If you ride in the evening hours when it's past dark, you won't be able to see at all. So we tried a high visibility vest, that wasn't enough. We also thought about putting a reflector on it and we had a reflector from another bike so we put it on the back and that just wasn't enough. So in getting those lights, it helps so much. So if there was any drawbacks on this piece of equipment, I would say it has to do with basically not having lights. But what did we give for those things? It was cheap, like 20 bucks? Yeah, it was like $18, 18, yeah. 20 bucks. Yeah, so we'll link set. to those, we'll link to the helmet and then obviously, you know, you want to get that face protection if they would get, you know, thrown off of the bike. 
Um, but just a regular bicycle helmet's probably okay, but we prefer to have the face guard uh, when it comes to, you know, a bike that's gonna entertain the idea of doing a jump. But if you do a jump, it's because you went really fast and there happened to be a bluff. Cause that's pretty much the only way you're gonna jump that bike. Cause even at 15 miles an hour, if you set out a small wooden jump, you could maybe jump, but I wouldn't recommend planning on a lot of jumps because the suspension is limited at best. It is adjustable too. Uh, you can go in and adjust the tension on the spring. We have not adjusted it. So yeah, if you had a bigger kid and you wanted them to be able to enjoy it more, just keep in mind the drawback is not the weight, it's typically the knees. Mm -hmm. And you'll also see that. I don't know if we'll end up having a clip with our older children riding it because they were under the weight threshold, but they had to basically sit on it and have their knees out of the way of the handlebars. Yeah. Because they're past the handlebars. So if you're too tall, even though you fit within the capacity, you may not fit great on the bike. So in closing, awesome product, super fun. It was exactly what we wanted it to be. And honestly, probably a little bit more mm -hmm. because it's a lot safer than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more like cringeworthy, like I'm afraid I'm being perceived as a bad parent. And why did you let my son get that from my wife's perspective? And really it's been like actually mutually yeah. successful, I think. I was really concerned that he just wasn't gonna be able to handle it because of the weight be of the bike. Yep, and but he, he totally he, can. He took off and we did our initial clips and he was going for about two laps around the front driveway and he had it. Yeah. So he hasn't even crashed it yet, which is surprising. I figured he would have. So he hasn't crashed it, you know, He has right? not, no. Yeah. So I haven't seen anything and the kids are all enjoying it, which is really fun. And even though it's uh, against the rules, the two of them were on it for a short ride and it was super, super, super cute, yeah. so. Our, his older sister is definitely more timid with yeah. things like this. Yep, and she's not as good at balancing and yeah. she's just not, she doesn't have the same skills as he does. So the older kids do and they do fine on it, but she's just kind of that middle gap and she's not gonna probably be doing a balance bike anytime soon. And he started a balance bike when he was two. We got him the smallest one he's we could five. find and he's five now. So he's yeah. good at the balancing part, but the whole, you know, throttling and braking and all of that, mm -hmm. he just picked it up. Oh, and right then away. one other thing too, that I didn't really go into detail if I didn't mention it, or if I'm re-mentioning it, please apologize, uh, accept my apologies. You can brake and throttle at the same time. So make sure you teach your kids not to do both. Most e-bikes will cancel the throttle input on brake command. So in this, you can brake and throttle at the same time. So you could hypothetically burn up the brakes quickly if you did that. So just make sure you teach them not to hold the brake, but to keep their hand on the brake. And that is a challenging concept for a lot of like younger kids, obviously. Mm -hmm. They aren't used to 10 speeds or 12 speeds or seven speeds or whatever it is that you give a kid the first time. And I think so. the one of the biggest limitations would only be if you have a kid whose hand grip literally can't, can't reach, reach the brakes. to brake. Yep, and if you did have that problem, one thing you could probably do is adapt something so that they could reach the backside but you have to be careful about that because braking is kind of important. Now it's not a super fast bike um, and it's a lot heavier than a normal bike. So just keep in mind, you're not gonna be blazing around. The acceleration is pretty timid. Um, but you, I mean, it all has to do with hand grip. If you don't have a lot of hand grip to do this, you won't be able to go super fast. And I don't know if you guys could tell when we were riding down the road, I would say, go ahead, you can go faster. And he would then pull his hand all the way down like this because he doesn't have enough grip strength to actually manipulate the throttle, which is a great safety device. Right. So. And you mentioned that I think in his initial ride too, you know, if they would fall, they're gonna let go of the throttle. So it's gonna stop, Yeah. you know, just kind of and built in safety. It's also gonna help protect the bike, the bike a little bit because those side pedals, they fold up, but they have quite a little bit of spring tension. So when it falls, it's gonna help to kind of protect that, that part of it. I mean, obviously we're more concerned about the kids, but you don't want that thing to get broke the first time he bails on it. So, very happy. Uh, come on up here, Caleb. Let's just show them and you can break right here. Perfect. So, you like it a lot? Yeah. He does. So, that's all you get for tonight, guys. Hopefully this uh, Surface Wednesday was a good use of our Surface Wednesday. We do have some more radio controlled stuff coming and we have tons of RC airplanes in the pipeline. I think we have like five or six ready to go right now but we just have to get them all ready for you. And it takes a lot of time. So we have a newfound respect for people on YouTube 
um, and we've had that for a few years now, but it is, it is technically a grind because we're constantly trying to get you guys new footage for every single week. And as you can see, it's turning to fall and it is absolutely gorgeous out here. But the thing is, you know what that means? It's gonna be winter soon. And so if you haven't already got those gift ideas finalized, just a hint right here, awesome choice. Maybe it's a little bit high on the budget side. So we have tons of other great options down below in the video description below. If you wanna help support our family and our YouTube channel, you can buy the items that we review or similar. We'll link to the entire website for high boy and you can pick whatever you want. You'll be supporting us if you purchase any of those items. But then also we have tons of aircraft, ground vehicles and the sort. And we have master links to all these major sites that we work with and partner with to help bring you guys new and amazing content, but then also to help enrich your lives with different opportunities like this. Because honestly, I didn't even know they existed and we had been doing e-bikes for about a year and uh, I realized this existed and I said, we must do it. And so special thanks to High Boy for sending that. And obviously the way it works is when you buy the stuff from our links, we get small commissions and that is how we fund our channel. So if you guys wanna help us that way, also we have Patreon and PayPal. If you just don't want this, it's not for you. Maybe your kids are a little bit too small or a little bit too big. And by the way, if they're too big, they're never too big to get into the regular e-bikes. Mm -hmm. And I must say, e-bikes, I thought were a huge gimmick when I first heard about them. I'm like, you don't need that. It's, it's just lame, just pedal, you know, get exercise, all that stuff. Those things are all, you know, sort of true. But then I went and tried it and I was like, I must have one. And it's been super fun. We haven't looked back since. And yes, you still get tons of exercise and it's still really fun. And by the way, kids just like electronics, you know, like adult kids. So stay tuned. Brian Phillips RC has your back. We have tons of new content. Make sure you're clicking the bell for notifications if you haven't already. Subscribe, obviously, if you haven't. And then don't forget to smash the like button. It really does help us with the long format that we do here on YouTube. It's hard for us to overcome that because the algorithm doesn't care how much you guys want the long format versus what you see, which is usually just entertainment commercial pieces. And we try, to guide, we, we try to go into detail and show you actually what's wrong with the products as well as what's right with them. And honestly, on this product, we can't find much wrong with it because it's been super fun. It does exactly what we thought it would do. And yes, the jumps are fake CGI. Yes. Because you're not doing any jumps off of this thing. It says right in the instruction manual, do not ride downstairs. Sure. <laughs> it is still super cool though. It is awesome. And it's exactly what you want as a parent because it's, super awesome, but it's not like so awesome that they're gonna like get hurt on it. I think, I think, I mean, you can get hurt on a tricycle, but in our experience, this guy is super good with a tricycle too. So <laughs> stay tuned so much more from Brian Phillips RC. Thanks for watching guys and for supporting our family. Okay, I just wanted to do a quick clip now that it's getting a little bit darker. They're still out riding. Um, and so he's gonna ride down so you can kind of see his headlight and his tail light. Okay, bud, go ahead. So again, we added these because our kids tend to be out at dusk and into dark like this, riding just around our property. And we just wanted to make sure that his siblings could see him, that Brian could see him. The tail light and the headlight both have a couple of different flash settings, but it definitely makes him more visible to his siblings. And so that's been a great addition to the bike and you can you can definitely see it. It's easy for him to turn it on and off. And the ones that we got happen to be rechargeable through USB-C. You can just pop the headlight and the tail light off the bracket on his bike and then we can take him in the house and charge him. So definitely been a great addition. Okay, so for those of you that have small children that you're getting this for and you have bigger children that are like jealous that they wanna ride it, <laughs> which would be like every family, uh, this is our older son and he fits on the bike. It's a little bit more awkward, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah, but you do fit. Mm -hmm. So he's gonna get on and show you what it looks like. He is within the weight range, but he's gonna fit the frame a lot worse. So we'll just let him watch. Now, one thing that's nice about a small child is they don't have grip strength to actually run the throttle at full output. And so it's almost like a built-in safety feature, which I didn't recognize. He's gonna go full throttle on speed three just to show you how fast it really is. And obviously it's getting dark. You gotta watch out for cats that wanna jump out in front of you and attack. 
So as you can see, it's still not going to be like some sort of murderous speed, okay? So all you mothers out there that are loving your children and not wanting them to end up, you know, injured or whatever, look at the speed. It's not insane, okay? Now, on a straightaway in a flat environment, go ahead and take that circle. See, see if you can do that circle there and see how it feels to kind of go fairly tight. So what you can see is that because his knees are almost in the way of the controls, it really limits how much he can do on it, okay? So if you have a bigger child, it's gonna be, even if you're within the weight range, you can see he's also sitting much further back. So just keep that in mind. If you're buying this for a child that is a little bit bigger, it's gonna be a little harder to ride and you're gonna get a little bit less out of the controllability. Now show him some grass ops. And he's about five, two maybe, height wise, but he is within the weight range of he's, the bike. Yeah, he's 20 to 30 pounds less mm -hmm. than the requirements. Are you full throttle? Yep. Okay. Come on up this little hill and show him how it does. So he's gonna come into the light for you too. So you can see it kind of tops out there on the top of the hill. Go full throttle. So you can see it's not going to be as aggressive. There's nobody gonna be doing jumps. Now I know that these companies would love to be able to show kids doing jumps, but the only way you're gonna be doing a jump is if there's a gravitational pull. <laughs> so now show us a full stop from full speed to full stop. As you can see, it stops very quick. Now, 15.5 miles an hour on a bigger child is gonna be a stretch, I think. But the thing is, it definitely is fun. And it's definitely gonna fit a lot of different sizes of kids. So I think you're gonna like it. Just make sure you get a little bit of safety protection for the kids, especially helmets and things like that. But honestly, after having watched it run, um, I suppose there's probably some people that are gonna get the invisible style. So just use your best judgment. And obviously we wanna just say a special thanks uh, to High Boy for sending this out for review. It's everything we thought it would be and it's not as scary as I thought it was gonna be. And that was a big impact for me because especially with our youngest, uh, we didn't want a situation where we got this thing out of the box and then they were afraid to use it. And that was never an issue. So you'll wanna obviously work with your kids and know if that's gonna be a factor because it's not like a free thing. So we're very happy with it and he's very excited to get back on it. So we have to end this video and we appreciate you guys watching as always. Brian Phillips RC's got your back. Stay tuned, we're gonna show you the ins and outs about this type of product. We're not gonna come out here and do a marketing gimmick. We're gonna try to talk you into buying something that doesn't fit your needs. We're gonna help you figure out if it does fit your needs. And that's what we do on this channel. We've always done it that way. And we hope that when it does fit your needs and you decide to make a purchase, you'll buy it through our links and then we'll get small commissions from the companies we work with. And we always wanna to be totally truthful, honest, and we wanna make sure you guys have value being extracted from these videos because obviously when you're spending hundreds of dollars on a toy for a kid, you want it to be good. Or if you're spending hundreds of dollars on a toy for yourself, which we oftentimes do, you wanna make sure it's well spent. So guys, stay tuned. We're gonna unbox this and set it up. It's a super easy setup and we know you guys will get some good out of it, so stay tuned. And if not, check the links in the video description below. You can buy it right now. And obviously, if you're not into this and you wanna support us, we have Patreon and PayPal. And check out www.brianphillipsrc.com for the full list of all the stuff we've gone over over the years of the channel, which there is a plethora. I mean, we have like thousands of videos. Mm -hmm hundreds of items. And if this isn't the one you were thinking about, it'll help you sort through. So stay tuned, so much more to come. YouTube, Brad Phillips. We have something new and exciting, and yes, I'm wearing gloves. So let the uh, fun poking begin. And this is something we haven't done before, but it's gonna be super exciting. It's a High Boy DK1 electric dirt bike. You're like, that box seems mysteriously small. I know you're kind of a big kid, but I don't know if you're three to 13. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unbox this, we're gonna put it together, and we're gonna show you it in use as a proof for you if you're considering this item. Because honestly, when we saw that it existed in time and space, we were like, 
we have a crazy child that may be able to use this thing. And so we were like, okay, we got it. We got to do it. So we did it and here it is. So we're just going to unbox this thing and see if it's everything you think it might be. And honestly, you know, you see marketing for these types of things. Oh, wow. Look, power, oh. tools, okay. and manual at the top. That was super easy compared nice. to every other single e-bike we've ever done. We, we were really reluctant to do this. But every time you see the marketing, you know, they're like in a jump and you're like, yeah, I don't know if I want my kid to be in a jump. And there's kids that are in jumps right now, but it's like, you know, they're not my kids. So I'm not necessarily against it. It's just that I don't want to like, you know, make my child a quadriplegic. So we're going to show you just how realistically dangerous this is and hopefully put your mind at, at ease as well as show you what's going on. Because the thing is, we are super excited about how fun these e-bikes have been for us. And we're like, but you know, like the kids aren't doing it. I mean, obviously the kids are having, you know, pedal bikes and all that good stuff. Looks like there's a couple of clamps on there. I'm not sure what they're all for, uh, but we're just gonna show you our experience and we'll let you guys know what we think of it. And if you wanna, we'll go through that at some point here. I'm gonna see if I can just flip this over because I'm not sure how this is gonna come out of the box. It's always awkward to unbox these big items like this because we try to do it in such a way that you can see good, but that it's not unrealistic. I don't know if I have to flip this over. Sometimes we have to cut them out and I'm afraid mm -hmm. if we do that, we're gonna have problems. So I'm actually gonna pull this off. I wonder if we need to set it on the floor so you can lift it out. It's always hard to well, tell. Well, I know it's always hard to tell. Yeah. I'm trying this way first. Okay. It doesn't say like this side up or anything like that. I just don't want it to fall. Okay, the box is dirty and that's why I have gloves on guys because I'm a clean freak. Will you warn me if you see it yeah, kind of popping I out? Yeah, I will try my best to spot it. I can't necessary. tell if it's upside down. It is most it definitely is upside, upside down. down. Okay, so we're gonna do like we've done on other e-bikes. So I'm actually just gonna flip it back on its side and I'm gonna flip it back upright and then I'm gonna cut the box away. Is that all right with you? Mm -hmm. Or pull it out this way, maybe flat. <sighs> yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. We could do that. Okay, so I might need a little bit of help on this. I mm know -hmm. uh, it's gonna slip out of the packaging though. Okay. I'm just not sure if we can do that because if we pull this way, it's always awkward. I wish they would put instructions on the side of these boxes that say something like pull this way out or step one, cut box here or step two, do this or that. Oh, it looks so cool. I'm super excited. So anyway, we have a, our youngest child is kind of a crazy one. And um, that's because he's the fourth one. Yep. So it's like the more children you get, the more crazy they get in my expectation. And if he would have been our first child, then things may have turned out a little different. But anyway, <laughs> this is the way things worked out. Okay, so that looks totally awesome. I can't wait to get the rest of it out. These things, they just slipped out. So we'll just leave those in the box but you can see they just kind of uh, cradled the bottom wheel. So I'll just lay this off to the side. Okay, so when we unbox these things, I mean, if you're anything like me, you're like, that's kind of lame. But at the same time, when you get an item of this cost and size, you wanna know that it's gonna get there in one piece. So we do definitely want to share this entire experience. So far, it's been like the easiest unbox, but it's also the smallest one we've done. Right. Um, well, we did have a, an e-scooter that was small like this. And one thing to note is it says what it is on the box. So if you're getting this for yes. a kid for Christmas that can read, it says, yeah, it it says on the right box. on the box. So, so you're, be aware of that. you're gonna need to be careful how it delivers. Now, did we have to have signature required we on this not. one? This one was not. Okay, so it's laid flat. I don't wanna damage the, the, the countertop. So I wanna set it up right. And I'm looking for a kickstand. I definitely see the kickstand here. So I think we can just go ahead and, oh wow, that looks so cool. I wanna show the people as we pull this out. Okay, inflate to 45 PSI. This feels like really hard rubber. And um, so I don't know if that's good, bad, or ugly. It's definitely spring loaded here on this. And then this is all tied up with a singular zip tie. So I think I'm gonna trade off my knife for a zip tie and a zip tie, excuse me, not a zip tie. We're gonna trade it for a side cutter so that we can clip the zip tie. Now it is a big old zip tie too, so don't think you're gonna just get away with scissors necessarily, because it is a thick zip tie. Okay, so let's do that. And then so far we've, 
We've been kind of amazed actually how easy it is to put these bikes together in general. And uh, this is the first time we've worked with a company called High, uh, High Boy. And so we're excited to see if this is any good. We're gonna share our findings with you. That's what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. And you're like, but you're an RC channel. No, we do lots of different things, but RC is one of the mainstays, obviously. And uh, when you have a giant radio controlled device that you can ride on, it's totally sweet. So, all right. Okay, there's that. Okay, big padded handle, love that. Brake, obviously. And then there's an on off, high low, that's kind of weird. On, oh crap, it like turns on, oh. so be careful. Okay. Um, all right, so then this is gonna clamp on here and that's what those two clamps were that were in that bag, okay? So you see right here and here is where that's gonna go. I'll trade you spots so you can show the people at home. Okay, so they would go here and here and they're gonna bite this, okay? So in order to set that up, I think I'm just going to walk the bag out. Now they do have this, uh, you can see the decals pulling a little bit, that's a bummer. But they have this in a black and red and silver highlights, what we got and they also have it in a blue. Okay, now there is another spot we have to cut a zip tie. It's holding up the pegs right here. Okay, now I don't know if that's twisted or if it's supposed to be like that. Oh. Oh no, it's, it's twisted because the beam goes through like this and then it's where the foot guard is okay. or the peg. Okay, so that's good. Now there's another zip tie right here and I'm not sure if that's just holding packaging on or what exactly it's holding, but I wanna get the kickstand out. Okay, that looks pretty good. And why is there a zip tie exactly? I'm not is sure. Is it holding that foam on? I'm gonna go ahead and undo it. Looks yeah, like it's it. just holding the foam on. Okay. We always try to keep the packaging just in case there's something like horribly wrong with these things, but we haven't had one like that yet. We've been fortunate. Um, all right, so I guess I'm gonna try to set it up on its main wheels, but of course there's nothing to hang on to the front half, the wishbone. Can you help me spot this just so it doesn't tip funny? Okay, I'm just yes. gonna tip vertical. Well, it's not overly heavy. Okay, now let go, I got that. The kickstand is a little bit too tall, it's wanting to tip over. Okay, so I'm gonna just rotate that so the brake lines aren't a problem. And then obviously that's gonna be manipulated to whatever height you want for your child or your very small self. But I'm looking at this kickstand thinking that doesn't look like it's gonna work very good because it's too tall. You see what I'm talking about? Like it wants to tip the bike oh, over. yeah. So that's annoying. I don't know what we're gonna do about that. I'm sure there's probably an adjustment. In fact, oh look, that fell down too. Okay, so now we're gonna have to probably, you know what, we can pause and we can put the foam underneath the wheel and that will cradle the machine. Okay, so we did get a piece of foam and the foam came out of the box. So the foam keeps it from mostly tipping. And there's also a spring and uh, shock assembly that needs to be attached back there. So we noticed that. So these two things are what are gonna go on here and actually hold your handlebars. So as your child um, you know, is smaller or bigger, you can make adjustments, okay? So that just goes on top and bottom um, in two spots there. So I'm just gonna hold this roughly in place and then we'll just get these kind of, you know, finger tight or whatever. And then later on, when we have uh, our youngest up here, he can test it and we'll see how big it is on his body. Now, obviously because uh, kids are involved in all that, we'll probably, um, we did go ahead and get helmets and safety gear and all that good stuff. If you're an adult and you decide to do crazy things, that's fine. But you know, when kids are involved, we always recommend doing safety gear. Uh, so we got a helmet with a full face shield and then um, gloves mm -hmm. came with it. It it's, has the, like the mouth guard mm -hmm. and then goggles and sure. then gloves, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty straightforward stuff and you may already have something like that or a bicycle helmet, but just keep in mind a face shield is really nice when you're dealing with a, um, a motorcycle or motorcycle-like activities because if you have a fast stop, you may get thrown over the handlebars and your face is protected a lot better. I have been protected by mine before, I know that. When you face plant, it's nice to have that protection. Okay, so we're just tightening this a little bit. And it does look like you have to go a little bit here and a little bit there, otherwise it doesn't, it's not very even. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to even them up 
um, by tightening them later too. But it does come with all these tools. I just opened the bag and whatever was in the bag, you guys saw it just there. Mm -hmm. uh, very simple process. Nothing out of the ordinary. I'm gonna back this front one off because I went all the way down on it. And then I'm gonna go a little bit tighter on this one here. I might actually have to loosen them both so that I can snug it up in the right position. You see how it's wanting to favor to the front. I wonder if there's a front and a back. They do look like they're not any different from front to back, left to right. I think they're exactly the same. So there is a protective guard here, um, but of course that's not gonna really do a lot if you have a, a fast accident. And this thing will go three different speeds and you wanna show them the shift settings there. Oh, yes, right here. So that's where your shift settings are. Mm -hmm. And I don't really see a difference on this bracket. I'm gonna just try for grins. I'm gonna put it backward just to see if it lines up a little bit better. You can tell the machining on these parts is probably a little bit, you know, loose on tolerances, but that's okay. So far, everything else looks really nice. The brakes feel good. That's surprising. Usually on cheaper components, you're gonna end up having uh, brakes that are kind of sloppy and a lot of play. These ones feel really nice. What kind of brakes are they? Are um, they like I a bicycle know. brake? I can't see. It's all covered with this guard over here on this oh, side. Oh, okay. Yep. And then the charging port is down here too while Brian's tightening that. So I think, if I remember right, the low speed is like five miles an hour and then medium is seven and a half and high. It's 15. 15, I think is what it was. So, which sounds crazy if you're just new to e-bikes, but 15 miles an hour on an e-bike is pretty slow. So, we have machines that will go, for me, at 280, 290 pounds. They'll put me down the road at 35 miles an hour. And we're just getting faster and faster as we review different products. And I can tell you that from an adult's perspective, at least an adult guy's perspective, in my in my, my consideration would be get as fast as you can get uh, because you can always go slower with an e-bike or, or scooter or hoverboard or whatever it is, a, you know, um, one wheeler. Okay, so you see how that moves around now free? Mm -hmm. um, not totally free, I'm gonna tighten it just a little bit more. This tool is just, a, it's kind of a tough angle. I think if I had a crescent wrench, it would make it a lot easier. But since this isn't closed on either end, this is a three, uh, 13 and 10 millimeter. Um, but since it's not closed on either end, you can't use it to torque the screws. Okay, all right, so now that that's done, if you guys look back here with me, you can see there's one more um, nut and bolt. You can see a nylock here. It's got that nylon insert on it. And uh, I think I might need a hand on this part just because I don't have quite enough hands to do this, so I'm just undoing this. If you come around the other side, you might be able to show them some of these things I'm seeing. Oh, okay, it doesn't unscrew, good. But while we've got this open, let's show them in here. You've got the chain, and the chain goes back, so it's chain-driven, okay? And it looks like the brakes are actually some sort of a drum brake. It goes around and then grabs on. So that's an interesting design choice. Okay, so you see what I'm doing here? Just dropping that down. And there's some overload uh, bushings here, it looks like. So if you really totally bottom out, you're not gonna hit the frame. So that's nice. I'm just kind of manipulating this by hand. It's not super hard, but it is a little bit heavy. So this bike in and of itself is only in the like 30-ish range, mm -hmm. um, but the package is quite heavy. So, oh, 15.5 miles per hour total. Max weight load is about 140 pounds or 64 kilos. So if you have a child that is approaching the weight limit, you'll want to just keep in mind that performance deteriorates really quick once you get past the weight limits on these things. Um, obviously, there's going to be some safety concerns, but the biggest thing is if you're wanting to have a fun experience, you're not going to enjoy it very much if you're... Um, if you're right at the weight limit, I can tell you that from experience on some of these e-bikes and then the components are definitely going to deteriorate quick. They do not build in a lot of excess capacity on these things in our experience. Okay, so I'm just basically getting to where I see the shaft, touch the nylock and then just a hair pass because I want these bushings not to bite super hard. 
I just want them to keep together. Okay, so that's good. Then obviously you have a spring here and it looks like there is an adjustment up there. So you can adjust the collar right here where my index finger is, right where I'm pointing. You can actually adjust the spring tension if you'd like. That's gonna be something you can do to help if you have a rider that's a little bit heavier. You can put a little bit more spring tension and that will of course give you a little bit better ride, a little bit better response and spring tension so you're not sitting so low. Now obviously we need to tighten these once we get everything in order, but I think now that we have the bike in the right position and I'm just gonna keep calling it a bike, I don't know if it technically is a bike or a motorcycle or what we need to call this thing, um, but yeah, now that we have it up in the upright position, you can see that the kickstand works perfect. That is so sweet. <laughs> I am super excited. Um, these are the types of things that I really wish I could have had as a kid. And uh, now we're able to offer these things to our children, which is super cool. And that's one of the joys of living in the country um, is to be able to bring these fun things to your kids. Now, if you don't live in the country, obviously you have to check, you know, your, your local rules if you're gonna be riding this in parks and things like that, there will be some rules uh, because I believe this is treated like an e-bike. So just check out your local rules before you spend a lot of money on it, or just make sure you have a good place you can go. Uh, for most people, of course, it's gonna be out front, um, or for us, it's gonna be out on our property, which is nice, so we have a lot of room for that. Now let's talk about plugging this in. This is a regular 110 plug. It says 42 volts out at 1,000 milliamp hours, or milliamps, not milliamp hours. And so that just means that you're basically uh, 42 volts at one amp. That's uh, 4.2. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. That's, that's a lot of power. But the thing is, this is a pretty big power circuit. So when you get a big power circuit, these switching power supplies are always gonna be heavy. Now there's a light here. So I think what I wanna do is, cause it's so bright with the sun right now, I'm gonna reach under and just plug this into our island. We have a regular 110 outlet down here and it looks like there's no light when it's unplugged. If you wanna show the people, we can show the people. See, there's no light when it's unplugged. Oh wait, so that was weird. It went from red to green. Did you see how it I switched? I saw the flash right before, yep. So I don't know if it just comes on. Okay, now the cord is not very long, but we're also in this unique circumstances. Why don't we just go to the other end of the island? Just move everything down. Because we have an overhang here. Yeah. We were trying to avoid filming right here because the sun actually gives us some big exposure. Look, just to show you how much power is in there. Yeah. It's, it's unplugged. So you can do Halloween tricks with that. Um, okay, so we're gonna plug that back in and we'll just bring the bike down here. Cool thing is you can get rid of the foam. Pretty easy assembly. I mean, that took us, what, like all of 10 minutes. Of course, filming always makes everything take longer. Mm -hmm. And then if you have somebody like me in your life, you understand what I mean when I say this, but I talk a lot. <laughs> See, you can say that. And the brakes are only on the back, so you don't have to worry about the kid ejecting himself across the yard, because front brakes would be where you would have that. But also at the same time, your front brakes are gonna be the most effective brakes. So that's a bit of a disappointment and an encouragement at the same time. Okay, so we're gonna plug this in. Obviously the drum goes in there, it's very simple. It changes to a red light. And then of course it runs through the charge circuit and it can tell when it's full, so it does. And we have a nice 90 degree angle on each of the uh, air inlets and it says inflate to 45 PSI, which would be a pretty dang firm tire. There's good protection for your child from the chain here. Okay, obviously, uh, depending on if your kid has leg protection, that may or may not be as big a deal. And then there's also adjustments here, it looks like for the guard and that's on the brakes. So you can see the spring tension right there. You can make some adjustments right there if you need to. There's a cam that moves like this and that's actually what pulls, pulls down here. You see that? Mm -hmm. Can the people see where it's touching? So it's a pretty simple and intuitive brake system. I would prefer to see brakes that are disc brakes over a drum brake, but whatever gets the job done. The thing is too, it might be a little bit bigger and more robust since it's only on the back wheel. And also it's driven on the back wheel. So I'm not sure if there's gonna be any electromagnetic braking. Uh, it sure feels like there is, yeah, there's definitely a wire that goes in here. See this? When there's a wire that goes into the brake, that means that the machine is privy to the braking. Okay, so that's important to know because if you have a machine that's unaware of braking, 
then it's not gonna be, a, it's never gonna have electromagnetic braking, so I'm not sure if this one does or doesn't. But if you have electromagnetic braking, you can stop the back wheel on a dime. So I'm just gonna go in here. I feel like this is a good time since we have it held up. I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple more turns in here. And if you're looking for a way to tighten these and you don't have a million different tools, of course you may have a million different tools and this is no big deal. You just get the right tool. Then what you can do is you can take any sort of a, a box end wrench. In my case, I'm gonna use this crescent wrench because it's easy to get and it's got a hole in the back. So I can use it to create a little extra leverage. You can also um, take and use this to create extra leverage. In my case, I just wanna get in here and then I can put this handle in and then of course brace the handle and then I can torque. And that's gonna tighten up the handlebars. And uh, I just felt like I didn't have enough with the length of that tool, which is not uncommon. So, Camera crew, what are your thoughts on the build? I think everything looks very nice. Yeah, the build was easy. If you're opening this up on Christmas morning, they're not gonna have to wait four hours for you to right. assemble every You may have piece. to wait four hours to charge it though. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how long it takes to charge. That's right. And the other thing too is e-bikes are notoriously, notoriously unscrupulous about how long the range is. Don't freak out about range. Range is always going to be a set, a subset of how hard you ride any e-bike. In my experience, the ones that say go 50 miles, they don't go 50 miles because I always ride them way too hard. I wanna show you one other thing too. This is just a finding I'm looking at. So you'll note that this bolt is not keyed in straight. So you're gonna have to line up perfectly straight to show the people this. This would be straight, okay? I think it's at a bit of a cant like this. Turn the camera so it's level. There you go, with the handlebars. Okay, so we're gonna try to show you what I'm talking about. I want you guys to see this because here on Brian Phillips RC, we point out details that we don't like. You're gonna have to move over to your left. There you go, right there. You guys see what I'm talking about? The head of the bolt is off to the, what would mm. be your right side of the screen. So it's tipped over just a hair. And I think that's part of the reason why I'm fighting this one. Mm. So when they machined this bottom uh, buckle or whatever you want to call it, um, it's just been allowed to go in at a slight angle. And so it's really made it kind of challenging to get a good bite there. Now, I don't think I did anything wrong, but sometimes if you get into something like that and you want to validate that you have everything assembled correctly, you can go ahead and disassemble this one spot and just double check by flipping it around and seeing if maybe you you know, bound it up there wrong. Now I can definitely tell I didn't, I didn't cross thread anything. So that's always good, but I'm gonna take just a quick second, pull this apart and then just see if I can flip the bracket and see if I can get better alignment. I might even put the bolts into the holes without that top bracket on just to see if there's any improvement. So we'll show you what that looks like in a second. Okay, so we also noticed some things while we were paused. Uh, this is a current rated 12.5 amps for the motor. It's a model MY8035, and it's a 36 volts DC rated at 2,700 RPMs with an output of 300 watts. So it's a 300 watt motor, but just keep in mind that is geared. And so because it's geared sort of, I don't know, it looks like direct drive with a, with a chain that's gonna be under tension. So there's just an idler. And uh, here, we'll turn on the, See, this keeps it on the sprocket. It's a really small chain though. So that's interesting. Now also the model of this is a DK1. The trade name is DK1 electric dirt bike. It's 36 volts at one amp. Capacity is 144 watt hours or 4,000 milliamp hours. So the uh, max speed is 15.5. The max load of course is 64 kilograms or 140 pounds. And uh, basically it's only got the one spring back here. It looks like there's springs on the front yoke, but that's just, I believe it's just decorative. And then there is a big spring pressure on the back. So I'm not sure if that's a big deal, but I can tell you this from my personal experience, uh, controllability is somewhat compromised with springs on the front of e-bikes and bicycles. So real happy with the way it looks, real happy with the size. Uh, it's definitely heavy. But the thing is, it's like about 38 pounds or so. So you have to keep that in mind when you're talking about your child and, and you know sizing it up with your children. And then also, of course, there is no adjustability on height. So hopefully 
our kids get to sit on here and fit because the only adjustment for height would be of course the spring adjustment. And so that's very limited at best. So anyway, um, the only other thing you could do if you really wanted to is you could maybe move the handlebars forward or backward. So if you like this and you guys wanna help support Brian Phillips RC and what we do for the hobby of radio controlled airplanes and helicopters, quads, things like that, but then also cool ride on options like this that you see from time to time, just buy this cool item from the video description below and you'll be helping to support us with small commissions from the partners that we partner up with. Oh, and then I wanted to show you one other thing before I forget. On the side, there are spring-loaded pedals. Now, we had the pedals zip-tied up, but it's spring-loaded. So if you were to take a turn or if you would like, you know, bail on the bike and then have this go up, it's not going to be damaged hypothetically. And that is pretty heavy-duty steel. So just keep in mind, you're not going to be, you know, doing this barefoot um, because those, those are metal. And they are reasonably, you know, grinded down smooth. It's not like it's sharp, but that's definitely not something you're going to want to put a barefoot on. So real happy with it. I love the pads here on the handlebars. Everything feels like almost adult rated on the handlebars and just the solidness. Um, I did not see anything wrong with the way we had mounted this. I just think they tapped the holes at an angle on this jigging. This one was nice and straight, so there's no issue there. And then of course, the other thing too I was gonna bring up is I don't see that there's any lights on this bicycle. I don't see a brake light. I don't see a headlight. And so just be keeping that in mind uh, they want you to charge the bike for 12 hours when you first get it. So if you're thinking about doing this as a gift, definitely get the thing out, get it charging, hide it, do whatever you got to do. You can even leave the handlebars off and it's very small. I mean, you could almost put it in a kitchen cabinet if you had a big cabinet. Um, but the thing is, this thing would fit super easy inside of the trunk or in the back of an SUV or even between captain's chairs in a minivan. Uh, so it's definitely not huge and it's pretty easy to move. Um, the other thing too is the wheels are not gigantic. It looks like a 16 inch wheel, but I'm just gonna measure that too because I know somebody's gonna ask. Um, okay, so we have the wheel itself is actually, it looks like about an eight inch wheel, but it looks like you're about 12 and a half inches on the outside diameter of the tire. And then of course the width on the tire is about, let's call it mm, two and three quarters on the tread pattern. So it's a, it's, a, it's a decent sized bike. And then if you have your kids stand, um, you've you got about a 20, 20 and a half inches is where you're gonna hit, uh, excuse me. Yeah, 20 and a half inches to the center of the seat. Um, so now that's not, that's not to mean that you can't actually handle this bike if you're a little bit shorter because you can tip the bike over. But pedals to chair, you're looking at about uh, 13 and a half inches. So keep in mind, their legs are gonna be bent like this, okay? So, you know, if you measure the first part of the leg at 14, like I could, I'm, I'm big enough, I could ride on it, obviously. But the totally. thing is, when you're measuring your kid, you can measure to the knee. And if you have a little girl that's got, you know, like really long legs, or if you have a little boy that's got really short legs, that will impact their ability to ride this thing. And so just keep that in mind uh, when you're sizing this up. The other thing too is they suggest getting a couple of pushes and then pressing uh, into the throttle. So I believe the way that works is just on off like this. And then of course, I'm going to leave it off. There is a throttle pull like this, just like on a motorcycle. So the thing that's nice about that is if you have a child that wipes out, they're going to automatically let go of the throttle. So you don't have to worry about that. And also you don't have, um, you know, like a pull effect. We have one scooter where we have a brake lever style throttle which is really scary because when you pull and then the G-forces pull you back, you pull the throttle harder. So if you have an inexperienced child, you're not gonna have that necessarily as one of your issues because you're gonna, you're gonna grab and pull back just like on a motorcycle. So the throttle is like that and then you have a little bit of a feedback here. So it's pretty cool. So we're super excited to actually show this thing working. Now you guys have already seen it because we lay out our videos in such a way that you can see the action first and then you can kind of dive in deeper if you wanna see how the assembly went or if you ran into problems. We always point out things that we're concerned about. I'm not really super concerned about this being tapped at an angle. And when I say an angle, it's, let's call it three degrees off square. But just keep in mind that does impact the bite on this point. So because it's not flat like this, it should be flat, it's gonna be at just a slight angle. That means it's gonna bite more on the inboard portion than the outboard portion. So if that became an issue, I would have to actually put a shim in there. 
So I don't think it's gonna be an issue though because this thing is pretty solid and I torqued it down while we were off camera just waiting for the charger to go. So guys, this is really cool, high boy um, brand. And of course this is, the, uh, this is the DK1. Super excited to be bringing you this thing here on Brian Phillips RC and can't wait to get our son on it. Also, just to look at the, the speed buttons, we'll actually go over this while we're out riding it, uh, just to show you how it works. And then depending on how, if I can fit on it, I'm quite over the weight limit. Um, it's always a good idea if you can make it work safely to test these items before you put your kit on it, make sure everything is kosher and you're totally 100% safe because you've obviously got some uh, valuable cargo on there. So you wanna protect the kids. But uh, we love bringing you these things, and so we hope that you guys have enjoyed the video. And hopefully it's not too far off topic, but we do love to bring you some of these things that interest us, our family, and just our way of life here at Brian Phillips, uh, Brian Phillips RC, so hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you guys wanna leave comments and questions uh, down below, we'll do our best to get back to you. Um, special thanks to uh, High Boy for getting this thing sent out, and obviously you can help support Brian Phillips RC by buying one of these for yourself or maybe for one of your kids. Uh, in the video description below. And they also are offered in blue or red. So just follow the links. It's just exactly the same way as when you're buying a plane. Uh, small commissions come back to us from the companies that work with us and choose to work with us. So it's really good. And that's one way you can give us a pat on the back and then also help the companies that help us bring you guys this cool content. So, all right, that's all you get. So much more coming from Brian Phillips RC. We literally have stacks of stuff to bring you. So stay tuned, so much more coming. Don't forget to click the bell for notifications. And obviously check, check out brianphillipsrc.com if you have questions or if you're looking for coupon codes for things like this and other items that we have, and we will share them there because sometimes they come in after we've done a video and we don't know to mention them. So definitely check that out. And that is a good way to save a buck or two, and you'll still help support us by following the links there. There is no change. And if you really want to support us, but you don't like this, or maybe this isn't a good fit for your kids, a little bit too big, a little bit too small still, we have Patreon and PayPal down below. And then of course, lots of tons of other cool items that we have done in recent history. Uh, so you don't have to search too far for them. So stay tuned. So much more coming from Brian Phillips RC.